Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical lean algebra and application. Today we are going to have 32nd lecture. In this lecture, we would like to see some special features of the eigenvalues and how it can be generalized to particular application. First is the symmetric positive definite generalized eigenvalue problem. In this lecture, we discuss the symmetric definite generalized eigenvalue problem Ax is equal to lambda Bx, where A is the coefficient matrix, B is the right side vector, lambda is a scalar and x is the unknown. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors of symmetric definite pencil. What is this theorem states is the symmetric definite pencil that is a minus lambda of b has real eigenvalues and linearly independent eigenvectors. Since B is symmetric positive definite, it admits the Koleskite decomposition B is equal to L times of L transpose. So, from Ax is equal to lambda Bx, we have Ax is equal to lambda times of L, L transpose X. So, L inverse of A times of L transpose of whole inverse x is equal to lambda times of L transpose of x, where C y is equal to lambda y, where y is equal to C, where y is equal to L transpose x. The matrix C is equal to L inverse of A, L t inverse is symmetric. Therefore, lambda is real, the assertion about the eigenvectors is obvious. Since a symmetric matrix has a set of n independent eigenvectors. An interval containing the eigenvalues of a symmetric definite pencil. The eigenvalues of the symmetric definite pencil A minus lambda B lie in the interval that is minus of b inverse of a comma b inverse of a. Conditioning of the eigenvalues of the symmetric definite pencil. If x is an eigenvector of the symmetric definite pencil a b corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda the number v is equal to norm of x 2 upon square root of x star ax2 plus x star bx2 is a condition number for the eigenvalue lambda. The QZ method for the symmetric definite pencil. The QZ algorithm as we already discussed step 1 and step 2 described in the previous section for the regular pencil a minus lambda b can of course be applied to a symmetric definite pencil. However, the drawback here is that both the symmetry and definiteness of the problem will be lost in general. We describe now a specialized algorithm for the symmetric definite pencil. So, the algorithm is the Koleskai QR algorithm for the symmetric definite pencil. Input is you have a matrix A R of n over n symmetric and B belongs to R of n over n symmetric positive definite. Output is the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the definite pencil A minus lambda B. And step 1 is Find the Koleskai factorization of B that is B is equal to L times of L transpose. Step 2 is form C is equal to 
L inverse of A or L transpose O inverse by taking the advantage of symmetry of the matrix A. Step 3 is compute the eigenvalues lambda i and the necessary eigenvectors y i, i is equal to 1 to n of the symmetric matrix C using QR iteration with single shift specialized for symmetric matrices. The eigenvalues of the pencil A minus lambda B, the eigenvalues of C. In the step 4, compute the generalized eigenvectors Xi of the pencil A minus lambda B by solving L transpose Xi is equal to Yi. Stability of the Koleskai QR algorithm. When B is well conditioned, there is nothing objectional about the algorithm. However, if B is ill conditioned or nearly singular, then so is L inverse. And then matrix C cannot be computed accurately. So, therefore, in this case, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors will be inaccurate. Specifically, it can be shown that a computed eigenvalue lambda obtained by the algorithm is the exact eigenvalue of the matrix. That is L inverse of A times of L transpose O inverse plus E that is where norm of E2 is mu times of norm of A2 B inverse of 2 norm. Thus, ill conditioning of B will severely affect the computed eigenvalues even if they are themselves well conditioned matrices. Diagonalization of the symmetric definite pencil, simultaneous diagonalization of A and B. The Koleskai QR iteration algorithm of the symmetric definite pencil gives us a method for finding a non singular matrix P that transforms A and B simultaneously to diagonal form by congruence. This can be seen as follows. Let Q be an orthogonal matrix such that Q transpose CQ will be equivalent to diagonal of C1, C2, C3, Cn. And set P is equal to L inverse of transpose Q. Then P transpose AP is equal to Q transpose L inverse of A times of L inverse of transpose Q. Then you can write it as Q transpose CQ which can be written as diagonal of C1, C2, C3, Cn. And P transpose BP is equal to Q transpose L inverse times of B, L inverse of transpose Q, then ultimately you get Q transpose L inverse, L into L transpose, L inverse whole transpose into Q is I. Note that B is equal to L times of L transpose. So the algorithm is as follows. Simultaneous diagonalization of a symmetric definite pencil. So, what is the input you have? Input is a symmetric definite pair AB that is A is equal to A transpose, B is equal to B transpose. Output is a non singular matrix P such that P transpose BP is equal to I and P transpose AP is a diagonal matrix. Compute the Koleskai factorization B is equal to L into L transpose and step 2 is form C is equal to L inverse of A times of L transpose L inverse by taking the advantage of the symmetry of C that is C is symmetric. Step 3 is applying the symmetric QR iteration algorithm to C find an orthogonal matrix Q such that Q transpose CQ is a, a diagonal matrix. Flop count. If you look at the flop count for the above algorithm, the above algorithm requires about 14 NQ flops. Suppose if n is equal to 2, that is 2 by 2 matrix, 2 q is 8, 14, 8. So it requires 1, 1, 2 iterations. So what is the flop count? The flop count is, the above algorithm requires about 14 nq flop counts. If you consider this example, a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. And matrix b is this matrix, 10, 1, 1. 1, 10, 1, 1, 1, 10. A is symmetric, 
A is symmetric and B is symmetric path to definite. And step 1 is Koleska decomposition of B that is equal to L times of L transpose. Now to calculate L, so you will have H11, H22, H33, H21. So this is uh, the lower triangular matrix. And where H1 is equal to this computation, H2 is this computation. So as H11 is not equal to 0, so we should be able to divide it. And the computation of H22 you can see from here. B22 minus H square 21 and when you compute it you would end up with this value. Similarly H31 is 0 0.3162 and H32 is this value you do get it. So that means essentially H22 is 3.1464 and H31 is 0.3164 and H32 is 0.2860 and H33 is equal to H33 is 3.1334 3 3 therefore the matrix is L is this so you will have a non-zeros 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 rest are all zeros a sparse matrix of lower triangular in the step 2 if you write it as form C is equal to L inverse of A times of L inverse of T. So by calculating we do get this matrix. So what is then C? C is of the form of like this C all these values and this is a lower triangular matrix multiplied with A will give you this matrix C. Look at the entries of C. They are all close to you know the smaller values, so it, it is obviously will become what you call well conditioned. And step 3 find an orthogonal Q such that Q transpose CQ is equal to diagonal of C1, C2, C3, Cn. So, this is the matrix you do get it using QR algorithm iteration to C. Step 4 is form P is equal to L inverse of transpose of Q. So, this is the matrix you do get it and this is the one which you multiply. So, ultimately you do get this matrix. And step 5 is verify P transpose AP that is P transpose AP is diagonal of 0.8179 minus of 0 0.06790 and P transpose BP is diagonal of 111. So, orthogonality of the eigenvectors, note that P is equal to P1, P2, P3, Pn is an eigenvector of the matrix and it is easy to see that Pa transpose Bp is equal to 1 for i is equal to 1 to etc. for i not equal to g, Pa transpose Ap is equal to Ci. So, generalize the Rayleigh quotient. The Rayleigh quotient iteration defined for a symmetric matrix A in the previous lectures can easily be generated to the symmetric different pairs AB. So, the number which what we are computing lambda which is equal to x transpose Ax upon x transpose Bx that is 2 norm is equal to 1 is what we call a Rayleigh quotient. Significance of the generalized Rayleigh quotient, it can be shown that the generalized Rayleigh quotient as defined above has the following property. The generalized Rayleigh quotient lambda minimizes f lambda is equal to norm of Ax minus lambda into Bx that is B naught where the B is defined as like this norm of B2 is equal to Z transpose B naught of Z. It can be used to compute approximations to generalized eigenvalue lambda k and eigenvectors xk for the symmetric different generalized eigenvalue problem as shown in the algorithm. So the algorithm is the generalized Rayleigh quotient iteration algorithm is you have the input a symmetric definite pair A, B and uh, that is A is equal to A transpose, B is equal to B transpose, both are greater than 0 and output is an approximate eigenvalue A, B and step 0 is choose X naught such that norm of X naught is equal to 1. And step 1 is for K is equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. until the convergence compute lambda K is equal to 
एक्स के ट्रांसपोज ए एक्स अपॉन एक्स के ट्रांसपोज बी एक्स दैली क्वेश्चन सॉल्व फॉर एक्स के प्लस वन दैट इज ए माइनस लैमडा ऑफ के ऑफ बी टाइम्स और एक्स के प्लस वन इज बी एक्स जनरलाइज आइगन वेक्टर नॉर्मलाइज दिस वेक्टर एक्स के प्लस वन सो एक्स के प्लस वन अपॉन नॉर्मल एक्स के प्लस वन सो दिस इज नॉर्मलाइज वेक्टर the quadratic eigen value problem here we discuss a more eigen general eigen value problem called quadratic eigen value problem so this is the you do have a this lambda is a scalar lambda square of m plus lambda of d plus k acting on x is equal to 0 where md k are n by n matrices the scalars lambda are the eigen values and eigen vectors are the right eigen vectors The left eigen vectors are given by like this. Y star times of lambda square cap lam plus lambda d plus k is equal to zero. The matrix P two lambda is equal to lambda square m plus lambda d plus k is called the quadratic matrix pencil. The pencil is called regular if determinant of P two lambda is not identically zero for all values of lambda. Otherwise, it is called singular unless otherwise stated. We will assume that the pencil is a regular pencil. when m is non singular when m is non singular the pencil is regular and has 2n finite eigen values in fact it is easy to see these are the 2n eigen values of the 2n by 2n matrix so this is the matrix a is equal to 0 i minus m inverse k minus m inverse of d where i is an n by n identity matrix an eigen vector u of a corresponding to the eigen value lambda is of the form u is equal to x and lambda x thus An eigen vector x of p two lambda is just the eigen vector of the first n components of U. When m is singular, the degree of p two of lambda is r is less than two n. In this case, p two of n has r finite eigen values, and the remaining two n minus r eigen values are n finite eigen values. Consider the pencil p two lambda with m is equal to diagonal of one zero, where k is equal to four minus two minus two six. Then determinant of p two lambda that is lambda cube six lambda square fourteen lambda plus twenty is a polynomial of degree three. Therefore, p two lambda has three finite eigen values and one infinite value. You can verify using this MATLAB command once if you start doing on the MATLAB. So essentially, the algebraic multiplicity of an eigen value lambda is the order lambda of the corresponding zero in determinant of p two lambda. The geometric multiplicity of lambda is the dimension of the the kernel of p two lambda. An eigen value is simple if its algebraic multiplicity is same as the geometric multiplicity. A defect to eigen value is an eigen value that is not semi simple. An eigen value of multiplicity k greater than n is necessarily a defective eigen value. So there are many more applications of this. Uh, quadratic eigen value problem the quadratic eigen value problem arises in variety of applications which includes operation of the structures that is vibro acoustic systems fluid dynamics electrical circuit simulations signal processing microelectronics and mechanisms and many more applications so i will be stopping over here in the next class we will look at into some more applications and uh, i will demonstrate each one separately how this uh, decompositions would help us in order to find out the solution to these equations thank you very much